Good morning, good morning, family. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. So winners with a Z.org. Live.SoWinners with a Z.org. And we're streaming on some social media platforms that allow the stream to go through. So welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's good to see everybody. It's good to know everybody's with us again. Amen. And um, man, if this is your first time, welcome to the Morning Devo. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays. 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time within that time frame. And we go for like 25, 30 minutes. Amen. Tops. And then we um, go about our day. But most importantly is that we get into the Word of God. Amen. And we start the day off with the Word of God. And I suggest you end the day off with the Word of God through prayer. And then um, you could make that a spiritual habit. It's a good spiritual habit to do. Amen. But a lot of us are in deep spiritual trouble. And we have deep spiritual problems. And that's what I'm calling this one today. I'm mindful of all of it. Amen. Um, if something, I always put it like this. If I'm going through something in my spirit, spiritually, amen, I'm not the only one. I've learned that a long time ago. It's impossible for me to be the only one. So therefore, if I'm not the only one, I believe that the Lord wants others to be made known or to stay honest and to keep the main thing, the main thing. God is the main thing through the Lord Jesus, salvation, Savior, Lord, right? All of it. And then that's why you get into the word of God daily. Amen. Don't miss a day out. Don't miss a day. This is not like a, a work thing that you call in sick. Amen. If you're sick, you go to, the, to God. If you're healthy, you go to God. If you're happy, you go to God. If you're sad, you go to God, right? Day to day, you go to God. Amen. With everything. Yes, he knows us more, more than we know ourselves amen and he has the best plan for us and he has the best remedy and solution for us daily amen good morning sister joanne i see you good morning god bless you welcome to the morning devo so when be, what behavior this is a question what behavior is not acceptable for the child of god amen and i kept it to one behavior i know there's behaviors that i could have said it's unacceptable to god but that's too much to list amen God is a loving God. The world thinks that as a believer, I have to accept everybody. I have to accept everything because God accepts everything. Does he really? Does God accept everything we do? Does God accept all people or all behavior? Really? Is that what you think? Amen. We're going to find out today. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21. Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21, today in the morning, Devo. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. That's what we're here for. If you're watching and it's not live and you're listening, it's not live, no worries, no problems. You come up with something um, on the repeat, on a replay, amen, put it on the live chat. And um, if all else fails, go to soulwinnerswithaz.org, go to my contact page and connect with me there as well. So thank you so much. For those who are listening on Soulwinners with a Z.org, welcome back as well. So let's go for it, man. Let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. Help me share this out so that way you can help out the algorithm. Amen. Um, to share this out, to get this out to more people and then the usual, right? And it'll be a blessing for somebody else as well. So Father God, I thank you so much that although most or many of us go through issues and problems deep spiritual problems that you are the solution thank you lord god that we can come to you with anything and that nothing over overwhelms you and that you can handle our issues of life you love us you made us you created us you gave us the opportunity to be reborn you connected us to the eternal life through jesus and i thank you lord god for your work i pray a hedge of protection surround all my friends and family right now in the name of jesus with your holy arcing angels and your host of heaven, Lord God, that you would do that for me, myself, my family, our, my wife, our children, our whole family trees on both sides, the bloodlines on both sides, and for every single person that's watching and listening right now, for themselves and their families, a hedge of protection in the powerful name of Jesus, that we will walk according to your way of walking, that we would walk and talk and speak and behave according to your spirit in us, for all those who are born again, for all those who are saved. So we give you honor. I give you honor, worship, and praise daily. And I thank you, Lord God, that so many of us do the same. And now we unite in faith, knowing that there's one God, one faith, one truth, one Lord, 
one Savior, and we come together under the one Word of God, which is alive and active. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith with thanksgiving, knowing that you hear these prayers and you answer them according to your will and your purpose for every single individual that listens and watches. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. So let's go for it. Help me share this out for a minute. After the minute is over, we'll go into Galatians chapter number 9, 19, no, Galatians chapter 5, excuse me, Galatians 5, verses 19 to 21. I'll be right back. Amen. Let's go for it. Let's see what the Word of God has for us today. Amen. I'm excited. The Word of God is amazing, man. You can never, well, I can never get enough of the Word. Amen. There's always something there that either I never knew, that I knew, but now I'm learning more about what I know, and it's alive. The Word of God is always alive and active. Amen. So let's go for it. So deep spiritual problem. And again, I like to because a lot of us have multiple problems. Amen. But let's let's concentrate on what the scripture says and let's deal with the problem. Right. Uh, A lot of us have a we deal with a whole bunch of different sins, plural. Well, let's let's focus on the issue of sin. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not overwhelm ourselves with, oh, man, I have so many problems. Amen. Let's deal with one at a time. And God wants us to show he God wants to show us that we could deal with these problems problems and we could deal with the main issue the main problem and through his word you'll see that he's focused on he wants us to focus on the main issues doesn't want us to go okay now let's go to this one let's go to that one and we're not focused and we're not um, being set free from certain things because we're continuously dodging things amen go to the word of god i can guarantee the word of god is the solution for any issue, any issue, any problem in your life and in my life. Amen. I can guarantee that because through experience, I know the word of God never failed me. The living word of God never failed me. Amen. And I don't think the living word of God will fail anyone. (laughs) Nothing special except the special one that's in me. Amen. So there's no favoritism. Amen. God doesn't have any favorites. God has no respect of persons. Like, in other words, He's not just keying in on certain people who look a certain way, who act a certain way, who are educated, who are not educated. No, all. God took the punishment and the sin of the whole entire world and offered us all. Amen. He offers us all eternal life through him. All you got to do is believe. It's not it's not anything really outside of something that we could actually do. And I don't know why there's two cams here. Let me get this out of the way. Amen. So let's go for it. Let's go for it. Deep spiritual problem here on the Morning Devo. Right? And here it is. The word says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Sensuality. 
idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Now, who put this list together? Me? No, this list is literally in the Word of God. Apostle Paul was talking to the church of Galatia, and this was the list of things that the flesh accepts. Not the Spirit of God, but the flesh. Get it? I warn you, as I warned you before, so this is not the first time that the Apostle Paul warned the church. It's not the first time that I'm warning the church. It's not the first time that we went through this. But this is what was going on. This is what he was seeing back then. And ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest. Do we see the same things on this list today? For all those people who say the Bible is not relevant anymore, you have got to be out of your mind. Are you kidding me? If you don't see anything on this list that's happening right now, and this was written way before we we were here, right? Way before. And not nobody's alive at this point that when this was written, nobody's alive, Right? So this is for us today. Living word of God. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So they will not be accepted into heaven. This is a message of love. You don't see it probably because you're like, man, that's a whole list. And then you might see something in there like, oh, I'm on that list. Listen, I was on this list too. Right? I don't know anybody who wasn't on this list, who's born again now. Somehow, some way, they were on this list. And every now and then, they'll probably fall into fits of anger. How about rivalries? How about uh, sexual morality? Sensuality? Like, this world caters to all these things that are not acceptable to God. The world system literally caters to all of this. Businesses are flourishing in you know in the way they think flourishing is because of sexual morality. Businesses are flourishing because of sensuality. There's still people out there performing sorcery, there's witches, there's warlocks, there's idolatry going on with government and government officials and leaders and leaders in the church, idolatry going on, strife, divisions, envy, and we've been on this drunkenness series for a while and it's on the list. Orgies. Wow. The Bible talks about orgies? Yes. Like, who do you think is inspiring the apostle to write this down? Holy Spirit God, which is God himself in the third person. And he's communicating through Paul to us right now that those who do such things will not. This loving God that Paul is inspired by is warning us that if you're on this list and you're practicing that type of life and you're in the harmful lifestyle and you're doing this and you're doing that, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, how honest is that? And how loving is that? That's very loving if you think about it. He's letting us know, listen, if you're on that list, you got to get off that list. Amen? And the only way to do that, it's not a quick fix. Amen. The only way to do that is no step, five step program, 10 step program. Counseling is okay, but let's go to Christ. Amen. Jesus and give him our problem, our deep spiritual problem. Cause that's spiritual, right? All those things that I'm going to list of spiritual problems and what happens in the spirit, right? Usually or all the time will happen in the physical. Derek ready. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Welcome to the morning Devo. So that's what we have here. It's in the scripture. Um, the days of ignoring the scripture or saying, nah, I better not say that um, because it might offend somebody or, you know, this, that, and the third or making all kinds of excuses. Those days, for me, at least, are over. If it's in the scripture, I'm, I'm telling myself, well, we, gotta, we have to deal with it. Amen. There's no, there's no way around it. Let's deal with it. God is a loving God. He's not like a lot of people you speak to about the scriptures. They say, I don't read the Bible. I don't understand it. And it's a bunch of rules and regulations. That's what they think because they never read it. They don't understand why it was written, how it was written, who who got inspired to write it. They don't read it because they think the popular opinion is okay to live by. And the popular opinion says this is all irrelevant. 
the Bible, oh, you could take some things, there's some good things about it, but the rest, you can't take it literally. You got to read it and just, um, you know, take what's good out of it and just run with it because it's not, it's not relevant no more. It's not current no more. It's an ancient writing. It's ancient scriptures. Um, yeah, it's ancient scriptures, all right. Amen. But eternal truths in the ancient scriptures. So it applies today. That list, incredibly enough, amen, is still relevant. And people are still facing these issues in life. Amen. God is honest with us. It's time for us to be honest with God. Amen. So drunken behavior is sinful, right? And evidence of a deep spiritual problem. So I'm going to just snatch the one thing because we've been talking about drunkenness for a little bit. We snatched that. It's found on the list. And yet people are being ignored. And they're saying, well, ah, he drinks a little bit. It's okay. But drinking a little bit every day is not okay. Get it? Now, casual drinking. Somebody wrote on a post the other day, um, one, one glass of wine is okay. It's not going to do, it's not going to hurt anyone. Amen. Um, look, look at me closely. One glass will probably hurt me because my system is flushed out from all any alcohol or any wine beverage or anything like that. So one glass might respond to my body or I might react differently than somebody who's used to one glass every time or every day or, you know what I mean? So we can't, we got to be careful. Amen. I can't promote alcohol. I can't promote wine to everybody because I, I don't know how everybody's going to respond to that one glass of alcohol. Or, check this out, somebody might be past alcohol, and all of a sudden, since they see me or people I know, or just one glass, that might restart something that they were already past or already delivered from. Amen? So it would be irresponsible for me. I think the better way to do it is say, to ask the question, hey, do you drink? No, I don't drink. And then look at the people around this person don't drink, so uh, let's let's drink some soda, some some juice, right? Some water, amen. Just out of respect, and that person might be overwhelmed with that type of compassion, that type of concern. Like, wow, you really would do that for me? Yes, that might change somebody's life, amen. The kindness of God leads people to repentance. It's not the like, oh man, don't worry about it, right? Just do it. You know, we're all adults. That's a, you know, that's a thing, a way people excuse themselves. We're adults. It's okay. Amen. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we're reigniting and resetting things in people's life. Deep spiritual problems in people's life that they're trying to get through. And now they're seeing the light of Christ, the, the light and the salt of the earth, just doing what everybody else is doing. It, was, it will cause confusion. It won't help. It won't benefit anyone. Just to be cool for that little bit of time that you're with that person. You never know. Ask the question. Amen. I think it's more important to ask. What do you think about this? What do you think about that to people that are, you're around? You don't want to assume that everybody does the same thing all the time. Good morning, Sister Joyce. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devos. Good to see you, my sister and my friend. So drunken behavior is simple and evidence of a deep spiritual problem. And it's on that list. That list is Wow. Rivalry, amen. All those things on there, amen, makes sense to me. What about you? Selfish ambition, dissensions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of anger. All of that makes sense to me. That does not does anything on that list not make sense to you? Yeah, I see how that I God wouldn't accept that. I see how that would be by the the flesh, not by the spirit. Name one time, one instance that the spirit of God tells us to act those ways. Get into a fit of anger. If we're angry, we're going to have a righteous anger. Amen. And that anger is going to cause us to not sin. And that anger is going to cause us to do something for someone else that will try to relieve them from their stress and their anger. Jealousy? Well, how come I don't have that? I want that. I want everything that person has. That's weird for a Christian because we have Christ. We have everything we need to live this life in godliness and righteousness. Why would we be jealous of each other in the kingdom of God? That doesn't have a place. It doesn't make any sense. And it's unacceptable. Amen. To a holy God, a righteous God, a loving God, a God who poured out 
his best. So we should be um, pouring out our best. What behavior is not acceptable for the child of God? I'm, we're speak, I'm speaking to my family in Christ. Amen. So all those who are on here that are not in Christ. Amen. Um, and you're on that list. It really doesn't apply, but it does apply. In other words, let me explain. The application of all those things that are on that list. If you're living that way, amen, um, God's not going to accept that. So to get on the good side of God, to get into a right standing with God, go and bring that to Jesus. Amen. Those things, however things, however one of those things you're on or you're doing, amen, bring it to the Lord. You want to be set free. I know you do because none of that on that list will benefit you in any way. None of it. It's incredible that that list shows us that that's the flesh and the flesh wants to really destroy us. The flesh is part of what the enemy is planning against us. The flesh is part of the sinful nature, amen, that we're born. We were born in Adam. We came after Adam, so now we're born in sin. And Jesus is the last Adam. He would take us from that condition and give us the born again experience if we go to him with all our junk. Ask him to forgive us for all of it. He knows why we were born that way. Amen. We were born into sin. And we have a tendency to be hell-bent, people call it. And he wants to save us. He wants to restore us, redeem us from that situation. In every situation that we face. If we're on that list in any, any way, in any way. Drunkenness, jealousy, strife, discord, anything. Amen. Go to God with it. Idolatry. Don't come to me with that. Amen. Because I'm going to pray and I'm going to lead you to some scriptures. But if you want a solid relationship with the one who can set you free from every single thing on our list, go to the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. He's alive. He's ready. He's available. Amen. He's the Savior. He's the Lord. He's the King of Kings. He's the one who can satisfy your soul. People run to this list because they're trying to satisfy themselves. They're trying to... They're trying to fill themselves up with something other than the Spirit of God. Amen. And wines and spirits. That's why those those liquor um, state stores are called wines and spirits. Right? Wine and spirits because those are spirits. Amen. I know people say, no, that's not the type of spirit they mean. Listen, I think that's the type of spirit that is being mentioned. Amen. The spirit of drunkenness. When you go to those wine things... Um, spirit, I haven't been in a state store to be honest in years, so I don't even know what's in there no more. I know there's alcohol in there, but the reason why I don't go in there, I don't need anything from there unless they have the one of the ones that have in the front, you know, chips and and you know, beef jerkies and all that stuff. Probably if I had to, and there's no other place I'll go in there, but there's nothing in there for me. It might, like I said, some some saints be still sipping wine, and that's be, that's between you and the Lord. and and if that's what your community does, that's what your community does. Uh, I just won't partake. I don't have to. Um, I won't feel pressured. I won't judge. But I, it won't be for me. Amen? Because I know my personality. I don't sip on something, alcoholic beverage. I don't just sip on it if I'm not going to go all the way in. That's my personality. <laughs> uh, if you are thirsty, if I'm thirsty, I'll just say if I'm thirsty, I'll ask for something to drink. And it doesn't have to be alcohol. Even if everybody in the whole room is, you know, drinking alcohol and they're believers and, you know, they would say one is not going to hurt as long as I don't get drunk. You know, however they want to take it, me personally, I don't want it. That's all. I mean, to me, it's simple. I'm an adult. Make adult decisions. If you're an adult, you make adult decisions. And if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But you'll be surprised that one drink can turn into two or three Every alcohol, every alcoholic that I've known started with one drink. Every drug addict I know I've known, and I used to be addicted. I don't know if that's addiction to marijuana. I just used to smoke a lot of marijuana before. It started with one puff of marijuana. Every person who smokes and and, and our chain smokers started with one cigarette, right? And you might find yourself in this list today, but I have good news. You could get off this list ASAP. Amen. And be redeemed and restored and be set free from your spiritual problem, from your deep spiritual problem. Go to Jesus. Amen. So I'm out of time, but I bless you all. Go to Galatians chapter five. Read the whole chapter for yourself. Amen. God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.